Hi, everybody. Thank Hello. you for coming out. Um, thank you to the NPF for giving us the uh, chance to present today. I'm not sure if you can you can see this. It looks a little dark, but <laughs> all it says is my title, Gene Therapy for Parkinson's Disease. Um, as Sarah said, said I'm a neuroscientist. I work in New York City. I'm interested in uh, developing new gene therapies for Parkinson's disease. And also, I co-founded the Stop PD organization with Alex, my husband, who's going to come up next after me. And last one for today, so you can stretch. <laughs> um, as a scientist, I'm interested in particular, um, not just in uh, gene therapy for brain <coughs> disorder, but in the field of Parkinson's disease, I'm interested in looking at specific therapies that can help with the drug-induced uh, dyskinesia, which is a big drug complication um, that people with Parkinson's could experience. And, um, I'm cool. and also, I'm very extremely interested in looking into differences between men and women and how they differently respond to therapy. Because we don't have to forget that <laughs> women are not just tiny men <laughs> and unfortunately the way clinical trials go they include men, men, uh, mostly men and very few females and that really compromises the way the it's just this one the other ones are okay. white so don't worry I'm so sorry I'm not sure what's going on that really compromises the way um, the final result is because it doesn't take into account as much as it should the response from women but anyway, I'm just going to talk to you in general about what gene therapy is and give you an overview of what it is and how it works and why uh, we are trying to use these as a possible uh, tool to cure Parkinson's disease. Um, so as, is, as it, you saw already today a few times, so I'm going to skip quickly on this. There are different ways you can approach the disease. There is the pharmacological therapy through medications, surgical procedures, and in this I include deep brain stimulation, stem cell therapy, gene therapy, um, complementary treatment that includes also the exercise and uh, physical therapy, and then creating your own team having like a big team of doctors and family members and Friends that can really support you um, through, you know, this time of your life. What is gene therapy? Gene therapy is a new approach to treating, uh, specifically in this case, Parkinson's disease, which can be described as using genes as drugs. And I put this picture up just to give you an idea of what we do, and you will understand why I have a peel, and inside a peel there is a molecule of DNA, just to represent how it works. Um, so what we do is pretty much take a piece of DNA, which is called gene, DNA which um, encodes for everything we are, everything we do, the way we look from the way we think, everything. It's a molecule we all have in ourselves, and taking a piece of that to replace a part of DNA that we have that is dysfunctional will hopefully be a target for a cure for Parkinson's. So if you take a piece of DNA and you introduce it in this specific case in brain cells, we are going to, in this way, try to fix the dysfunctional cells. Um, the reason why this DNA needs to be in a capsule is because our cells have a system to recognize external molecules, whatever comes from the outside, and destroy it. So the way you want to give it to your brain cells is inside a shuttle, inside something that can really get into the cells and not get the DNA destroyed. And those are called vectors. These vectors could be different types. It could be a viral vector that I represent here, different size, different kind, or like lipids, anything that can create a shell around your DNA, that's a vector, a shell that can get into the cells. 
Um, obviously, when you use viral vectors, those are safe. We're not talking about anything toxic that can give you another disease. We're talking about something that is engineered in a laboratory um, and that is safe to use. I mean, it will not give you <coughs> any pathology. How does it work? Okay, so this is the way it works. First of all, you select a gene. Um, this is what we do in the lab. This is what we study. This is what we develop. We study specific genes. We're trying to understand if introducing the normal gene will reduce the symptoms. There could be, again, motor symptoms, non-motor symptoms, the drug compli induced complications like dyskinesia. So once we select the gene, and in the lab we prove that in animals that this gene works and it could be applied to people, then you insert the gene in a viral vector, so you make a capsule, you shuttle, and put it inside. You administer this <clears throat> to a patient. In our case, it's an intracranial surgery because it goes inside the brain. And then the viral vector reaches the cells, gets into the cells, and releases the DNA. Once the DNA is released, then it can produce that protein that is usually dysfunctional and replace the function of the dysfunctional protein, let's say, and work normally and fix the problem that the cells are having. There are two different types of uh, gene therapy that I want to show you because sometimes when we talk about gene therapy, we just think about viruses and we think only about brain surgery. It's not just that. Um, there are two types, the in vivo and the ex vivo. The one in vivo is called also direct delivery. What it means is that you make the viruses, you make the viral vectors with the DNA inside and you inject it directly um, into the patient. Once you inject that, they will release the DNA and take care and fix the problem. Let's call it like this. There is another way instead, which is taking the tissue from the patient, inject the cells of this tissue, and then reintroduce the cells in the patient. There are two these are two different approaches that we're trying to develop because don't know, we don't know which one's gonna be the best. We know that both of them have pro and cons. Uh, for example, introducing is it? using stem cells, using cells that are injected with viruses and reintroducing them could give some issues like um, reintroduction in uh, an area that is not exactly the best area or uh, a generation of a tumor, these kind of things, which you're not going to have with the first with the first approach. But at the same time, the first approach could give you some um, um, immunity issue because it's still an external body. So we are, we're working on both to see what we can engineer so that we can get the safest and the most tolerable, the most efficient way to correct um, what is not working in, in the brain cells in Parkinson's. Um, Okay, so I just, I already said this, the way it works is you go through a, a surgery usually, a brain surgery, and uh, it's safe and it's usually the, the patients are discharged within one or two days. Um, the studies that have been conducted so far and they are uh, the most successful are currently passing uh, phase two of clinical trials. Um, they are injecting the viral vectors into the basal ganglia, um, which Dr. Fisher just me, Dr. Fisher just spoke about. <laughs> so the brain areas that control the movement, that's where these viruses are currently going, at least the ones that are in clinical trial. Oh, I don't think you can see this, because I use, I always love to use purple and blues, <laughs> and I guess it's not working today. So these are just three strategies that researchers are, uh, are using to target the cell defect. Um, there are three main, which is um, targeting the pathways that produce dopamine, trying to increase the amount of dopamine that the brain can produce. Another one is increasing the amount of trophic factors that the brain produces, which are 
the molecules that increase the amount of synapses, increase the amount of signaling that you have in the brain, or targeting specific genes that right now there are about 15, 20 of them that we know could be the cause of Parkinson's disease. Uh, so you can, um, you can see, if you read about it, you can find all different possible approaches. And obviously, every group of scientists has their own favorite approach. But these are the three main lines that we are following because we believe that one of these will be successful. And I'm going to show you here in this, in this picture, in this cartoon, some of them. So you saw the brain already, and this is a section. This is the substantia nigra, the black thing, and then the basal ganglia, it's over here. I don't know if you can see the blue. But these are all different viruses that were generated, and they are in trial. And the ones that so far are most successful are these, called triple antivirus, which carries three, three genes to produce three proteins that help the production of dopamine. And then another one is this, which produces a trophic factor to increase the synaptic uh, plasticity and everything that really increases the connection between, between cells. Finally, I just want to show you how much gene therapy can do. This is a clinical trial that actually my boss did about 15 years ago. <laughs> um, so this is the brain of a normal uh, a control, let's say, a person that doesn't have Parkinson's disease. And what we are looking at is a scan that measures the amount of dopamine in the basal ganglia, in the, in the region that controls the movement. Um, the colors represent uh, the amount of dopamine going from cold colors to warm colors. The warmest, like the red, represents the most amount of dopamine. So in a person without Parkinson, you have this amount of red, this amount of dopamine, okay? These are two sections of the same brain. Then this is a person before receiving the gene therapy. And you can see how little red there is. This is the same person after gene therapy. And you see here how much more dopamine now that brain is producing, okay? So I wanna stop here because I have to split the time with, uh, with Alex. But I welcome any questions during the Q&A or later, as many as you want. Um, if you want to talk about what I exactly do in the lab, anything else, I'll be happy to answer your questions. And I'll just leave you with this little vignette um, about gene therapy. <laughs>